Aaron Ring, and I'm delighted to introduce our next set of speakers. Um, our first speaker, especially for this particular um, symposium, needs no introduction, but I'm delighted to do it anyway. And that's um, my colleague, Dr. Li Ping Chen, who's the United Technologies Corporation Professor in Cancer Research and Professor of Immunobiology, Dermatology, and Medicine. Um, so, Li Ping, please tell us what you. Oh. Okay. Thanks for the uh, for the invitation. Uh, I have uh, uh, so today this disclosure. My so the. Um, Today, actually, I'm, uh, this is a, my talk will be break to two parts. One is first, um, I will tell you briefly what we learned from this anti PD1, PD1 study, which we have in, you know, has been going on in my lab for more than 20 years. So we actually learned quite a bit of stuff. I will briefly summarize what we learned and then what's the key is key key point we learned, and then I will show you use this principle we we uh, we learned use that as a as foundation and then to learn and then to further progress and guide by that principle and then to develop the new uh, therapies. New therapy means uh, this is, could be a next generation and could be a better better one, okay? So the, um, in cancer immunology, um, traditionally you view this cancer uh, immunology as the uh, kind of car racing game, okay? You have cancer growing in the body and you have immunity try to play catch up, okay? So immunity developed obviously based on, uh, this morning I have lots of, lots of uh, lectures. Uh, I think it's a basic principle we understand is the when tumor growing, there's a lot of things available to Im for immune system to, uh, uh, to, be, to be stimulated. And cancer can release antigens and then um, trigger the, uh, the, the immune response. So the uh, so this this is a kind of traditional view. So then the based on that would be if the immunity can can catch up more powerful, then the immunity then beat cancer. Other way around, in many cases, we, particularly in the, in, the, in the cancer patient, what we we see what we see is the uh, cancer beat immunity is because immunity is not really pre catch up. So in this traditional uh, view, then there's a. a why I mentioned that is because based on this, then it's a totally different idea to develop different type of immune therapies. So current, current view based on more uh, basic uh, immunology study, then we know there's not just simply uh, these two, is a, two, two things are, are, are raising, okay, raising the body. It's more like cancer actually, B immunity also by uh, develop so-called immune evasion mechanism. Okay, this evasion mechanism actually play a very key role to shut down immunity. Okay, in a right different way. So then, uh, in this case, the immunity never catch up. Okay, so the, based on these two different view and then, and then lots of uh, uh, evidence of the research, then the um, in my mind, this cancer immune therapy can be clearly uh, divided to two different type. Okay, and based on two different ideas. First type, which has been uh, very traditional, has been used for many, many years, uh, probably more than 50 years now, called enhancement. Okay. Uh, I just summarized the enhancement. Enhancement is based on the, the idea, as I mentioned, is the, you have two cars racing in the body, and then the in intrinsic immunity is not sufficient, okay? meaning they are not, cannot catch up. Okay. So then the approach then would be just to promoting stronger immunity. Okay to generate better immunity, okay? To, to, to enhance the normal immune response, so then you're basically promoting all entire process of the immune response just to raise the immune response. And now we're actually doing pretty well in the field of the cancer immunology. You can use particular way, you know, cytokines, vaccines, or variety of different way, and then you can enhance normal immunity to much higher level than normal level, okay? Now it's like an adaptive transfer of T cells, for example. You can raise immunity to 100 times or even 1,000 times 
than, than normal physiological level. Okay, so it's so it's already uh, the goal is achieved. Then the but based on the another idea, which is uh, the uh, the immune response is often defect. Okay, it's because of this immune evasion mechanism developed by cancer. Then the idea then is is to to pre, to repair the defective immune response rather than just promoting in general to raise the immune response. You specifically go find out what is wrong there and then to correct that defect, okay? So this is this, uh, we, I actually call it a uh, normalization approach. So you can see this is a, this is a very different uh, the, the way to, to look at the, the immunity. So this cartoon just show the differences of these two type of approaches. It, the, on the top is the, let's say, uh, it, we can describe as immune response as the, the water flows through the, the pipe. Normally, water just goes through it, goes through the drain, and the, then the, uh, if tumors start growing, which is indicated here by there's a block in the middle of the pipe, then there's a different way to do it. One is to really increase the blood pressure, for, uh, uh, to, to increase the water pressure, for example, to push through the, uh, the, uh, the water, okay? So to hopefully to, to push through this uh, block. So that is enhancement approaches, okay? And normalization would be to identify what, where, what's the problem and where is it, and then selectively remove that particular block, okay? So you can see this is a quite different. So the, this, this um, slide basically summarizes what we learned from many years, many, many years of, of study on the um, PD-1 and pd one as you, many of you know, and, and this morning also a lot of speakers has talked about, we know the anti-PD-1 or pd one is, is a very unique therapy, okay? Unique therapy in a couple of ways. One is there's a very broad spectrum. Uh, they can cover very uh, lots of indication of cancer, okay? Which means that it's, it's efficient. It, it, it's, it's effective in many different types of cancers, which is different from the enhancement approaches, which is uh, usually limited to particular type of cancers, with so-called more immunogenic tumors. And it also, uh, the toxicity is much lower, okay, compared with enhancement. So the, um, the, so there's definitely something quite different, okay, need to be learned. So we summarize as the uh, three essential, uh, the principles. One is the, this type of therapy has to identify what, what type of, of immune invasion mechanism it is, okay. This type of Im Im invasion mechanism is associated with tumor progression, meaning is in normal tissue, such mechani mechanism is not present, okay, or minimally present, okay. So this is uh, associated with cancer or, or develop, induced by cancer, okay. Number two is immune invasion mechanism appears to be frequently happen in the tumor microenvironment, meaning is in the tumor site. Very few of those mechanisms develop systemically, okay. So that again is very different from enhancement, okay. Enhancement as I mentioned to you, often is the novel generation of the new immune response, so usually get systemic boost of the immune response. Number three is the target master switch, which is which could re reprogram or reset immune response. I think this is a getting very critical now for this particular issue is the, uh, as we know, uh, also the, you can see there's a lot of data present in, in this morning. In the, if you analyze the, um, the immune response in the tumor microenvironment, you can see there's multiple mechanism can be co-present in the tumor microenvironment, okay? For example, you say you have PDL1 overexpressed, but you also have a TGL beta, you have TIM3, LAX3, whatever, whatever, there's a series of, of those. And the, then how do you know? You just simply manipulate one single pathway and you can overcome immune response, okay? It seems impossible, right? Because if there's multiple, you know, pathway it's all, if all operating, then you just manipulate one, how you can, you can reverse the, the, uh, the suppression of immune response. Seems impossible, right? So the key, however, this argument has been going on actually for more than 20, 30 years, okay? Even we, before we started work, we started to isolate the, the, the molecule like PDL1. <laughs> that argument is already there, okay? I can tell you the, the, the in that time, we, we don't believe it, okay? We don't believe there is multi 
mechanism can act simultaneously. Okay. The way right now looks like is there's maybe multiple mechanism available, but always one will take a dominant seat. Okay. If this dominant seat fail, then there's another one will kick in. Okay. Very few, we see very few cases. Well, occasionally you could see it. You, you might see it in the patient. Then the, you can see maybe both mechanisms are very strong, they, they, they inhibit immune response. But many cases, is single dominant mechanism play a role. That gives the opportunity, okay? You can manipulate a single pathway, you can actually get rid of lots of cancers. So this is important, is to identify or to target particular must, must switch. So then the, there's a little bit confusing uh, concept in the field called, also called immune checkpoint blockade, okay? I can tell you this is quite confusing, uh, the, uh, um, the uh, concept, and it's very different from what this normalization we talk about, okay? For, first, immune checkpoint is, can be any normal immune inhibitory mechanism, okay? Typically, it's like, for example, CTO4. CTO4 is required for the control of the autoimmune, autoimmunity, uh, autoimmune T cell reactivities. You get rid of it, you, in the mouse, you knock out, knock out the, the molecules, you don't even have to give them any energy, mice die already, okay? So it's required physiologically. So this is one part of normal inhibitory mechanism which require for keep the peace of the, of, of, of the immune response. So it's, this is very different. We talk about this is tumor induced mechanism, okay? So this is not part of the normal uh, the control. Number two is immune checkpoint can be, most of them actually, is boosting systemic immunity. Okay. We talk about this, the uh, normalization is frequently happen in the uh, tumor microenvironment. And the also checkpoint is not really target muscle switch. Okay. This is what, there's no evidence so far uh, showing that. So uh, also based on this concept, so-called immune checkpoint, the many, many different target being um, put in the clinic okay, to, to test the efficacies. These are all single agent I listed, and this every single agent fail in the clinical trial as a single agent, okay? This is just a, a, actually a short list. There's a more, okay, more than that, actually probably double than that, okay? So the, um, I think we have enough uh, the uh, evidence, I think, showing it's not just simply checkpoint will work, okay? It's not just any inhibitor. It has to be very selective, okay? So, so how, how we approach it then? How we approach this question, okay, is the, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, PD-1, PD-1, okay, it, it, it works in fraction of patient, but we know it works about quarter of patient, okay, late stage cancer patient, okay, about, 50, uh, about 25%. So there's lots of other cancer patient, what is, what happened, okay, to what happened in the immune response to those patients. So th this is what we, uh, we try to approach this question, okay? This is a, a one of the very simple uh, classification of human cancer. This is all advanced human solid tumors, okay? And we start with the melanoma and then later goes to all the different type of cancers. I'm, I'm gonna show you in a minute. So this is a, this is a classification, this is a, ti uh, this is a time, uh, called, we call it time classification, is based on tumor immunity in the microenvironment, okay? And you can see on the left is the, uh, the uh, PT-1 or p 7 one expression, okay, based on that. And then the uh, right in the bottom is the, is with, without T cells, okay. So you can see this is clearly, this is on the, on the, on the top left, there's the top left or, or, or lower right, this is all single positive, okay. And then in the lower part, which is labeled as type 1, which is double negative. Okay, on the right upper, upper corner is the uh, double positive, which is, you do have both T cells and the pd one expression. So by this way then, uh, you can see this is a very different profile, okay. This is clearly, the, there's a heterogeneity of the human cancer, okay. It's quite different. It's just based on these very simple two, two parameters, you, you already can see this uh, quite diverse. So this is a summary of the variety of different, um, the uh, study from, uh, First from us, there's a few studies from us, and then there's a lot of others, all pulled together from different type of cancers, showing left, melanoma, this is how many cases, 256. This is early, uh, our early study published 2012. And then there's lung cancer, bladder, colons, uh, all these different type of cancers. 
and you can see the first type is double negative, okay, which means there's no T cell infiltration, okay, and then ob obviously there's no PDL1 also, okay, so that's double negative, which is basically is uh, it, 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 it's, um, there's no immune response in the microenvironment. So typically, this double negative um, type of cancers, um, immunologists just walk away. Okay, they say, well, there's no immune response, so so it's not my business. Okay, but if it's cancer immunologist, then you have to take care. Okay, so that's the different differences of immunologist versus cancer immunologist. So second type is double positive, which, as I mentioned, this type, which is the best, is a response to or benefit best from the. Uh, PD-1, PDL-1 therapies, okay, which is about quarter, quarter of the of the patient. And then type three is uh, have a T cell infiltration, but there's no PDL-1. Okay, so this uh, pretty obvious. This is T cell still dysfunctional, right? It's mediated by some other mechanism than than the uh, PD-1, PDL-1, okay, because PDL-1 is not even there, right? So this must be something else. So the type four is the P. PDL1 positive, but there's uh, um, but there's no no T cell infiltration. Uh, this is often due to uh, the genetic mutation, which directly hit the pathway of PDL1. So PDL1 is expressed automatically. Okay, it's not even needed to be to be induced. And as we know, PDL1 is typically induced by interferon gamma released by the lymphocyte or NK cells in the tumor microenvironment. Right, but it's type four don't fit. Okay, this is a genetic mutations which directly turn on. So based on this, you can see this is a, um, we, we see in the middle type two corner, which is about 25, 24, 25%, which is about a quarter of can benefit from the therapies. And type three um, is the, it's have T cells, but other mechanism, right? So this is a population we actually very interested. In. So I'm show you some, some data today and how we, based on this, um, the uh, classification, uh, we develop our, uh, the, the next generation therapy. So this is type two, uh, as I mentioned, this is a uh, uh, larger than my benefit from therapies. Type three is non PD1, PD1 mechanism. Okay. Obviously type one and four, which is today, I, uh, we're still working on that. And I'm not going to talk about today, hopefully in the, soon in the future. So type two, as I mentioned, the problem is T cell is clearly, clearly infiltrating. They recognize something, okay. But the, uh, but PDL1 is not expressed. Okay, so this must be something else. So we have actually developed uh, um, the uh, quite quite many years ago, actually about 10 years ago, we to develop uh, um, try to address this question, and we developed a couple of systems actually to address this. So one, uh, two platform basically, r right now is running in the lab. One is called Receptor Ray, which is developed by a very talented postdoc, Xian Yao. Um, Shen is in that time was come to a lab and then uh, he he is trained trained biochemist um, biochemist from uh, Sinai and then uh, from from Albert Einstein sorry and then uh, uh, in that time we talk about develop a system which basically including as much as we can all the membrane proteins okay in our system so basically is we try to dis display all possible membrane protein on the cell surface, okay? By, the, by that way, then if we want to identify the binding partner, okay, they say this is receptor ligand interaction. So with this system, then you have a sen very sensitive system to detect the protein interaction, okay? This actually is not, it, it's actually, it is a big deal because the, we know in the, in the field of the receptor ligand interaction, majority of cell membrane protein interaction are very low affinity, okay? How low? The, the best of cell membrane natural protein receptor ligand interaction, the best actually is probably one to two log lower than the, the worst monoclonal antibody, okay? Meaning is the worst monoclonal antibody, the affinity is still one or two log better than the best of cell surface protein interaction. So with that issue, then you can see this majority of receptor ligand uh, identification work is very difficult, okay? Uh, right now, actually, is is in probably two or three receptor ligand being identified every year. Okay, so with, with that kind of slow speed, so we developed that first for that purpose. 
Then number two is when we have the system going, we can display the molecule in the cell surface. This is thousands of genes okay, individually displayed in the, in the cell surface of the um, whatever, whatever cell uh, we choose, 293 or CHO cells. Then we develop this functional, functional array. Okay? So basically we wanted to know, we wanted to develop a high throughput system which can you display this protein and then very quickly identify what kind of function they have. Okay? So this is a, um, Jing Wang is a, is a postdoc fellow and a graduate student, uh, Jing Wei, actually uh, developed this system. Is the, we have this label as 6,500 uh, membrane protein individually transferred into artificial antigen presenting cells. Okay? These cells already have OKT3 antibody expressed as a membrane form, okay? which means they can stimulate T cells. Right? They can bind to CD3 and then stimulate T cells. So then use that to mimic the T cell receptor signal. Then this additional membrane protein expression will then start modulating the T cell activity. Right? So, so that's the idea. Okay? So modulation means either promoting or inhibiting. Right? So then we, we do have a reporter readout, which is uh, in this case is uh, Kappa B, to show that TCR signal eventually can travel down, down to the pathway and to have a sensitive readout of T cell either get activated or get in inhibited, okay? So by this way, this is a one of, one of display of the couple hundred genes, a uh, couple hundred of these cell membrane protein activities. In the middle, mark, mark means is the, this is a, the only the, the cells with, with TCR signals, right? So in the middle, then use that as, a, as, as the background. Then whatever things, whatever uh, the molecule can trigger signal above the, the mark is considered stimulatory, okay? And lower than that, then consider is the uh, inhibitors. So the, you can see there's a, there's a variety of different inhibitors which is already being reported as st stimulators. So the idea then is we will have, um, we'll have these two uh, the platform, okay? And screen a whole set of genes, okay? Usually thousands of genes. Now, even the, the Thousands of genes uh, the, uh, looks uh, the, um, quite a lot of work, but now we already automate the system. And now remember, the, in the entire human genome, there's only about 9,000 genes. Okay? So we're very close to, we'll be able to run entire uh, the cell, cell surface membrane protein to detect, to detect the activities. So the idea is then, with this screening, we will get a set of the molecule which either inhibit immune response or stimulate immune response. So there's a focus on inhibitors, okay? If come out from T cell activity array, then if they inhibit immune response, okay? Obviously, this is just one of the essay. We have multiple different essays, depending on what kind of question you're asking. This kind of essay, you can actually set up for NF kappa B, you know, read out TCR signal. You can, you can set up for other things, like proliferation or cytokine release. You, know, you can say whatever you want. So by that way, then we come up a whole set of inhibitors. Then we took that data, okay, and then to match what we found in the cancer patient. Okay, let's say for example, as I mentioned, the type three patients, right? These type three patients, type three patients have, uh, we don't know what, what's there, right? They, they must be, we, hypothesis is they must have some powerful inhibitors there, okay? And they, they shut down immune response. And this powerful inhibitor is not PD-1, PD-1, okay? Because they're not there, right? So then the, we will go through that data and then do a microarray or, or protein uh, the, uh, the analysis and showing in the type three patients what kind of molecule overexpressed there, okay? And use that to match what we find out in our array, okay? So by that match, then we pick the target, okay? This target is, which is show activities in, the, in our first screening, and then also show right location, okay, which is in the microenvironment. Obviously, they express in minimal level in the normal tissue. Okay, this is, as I mentioned, that's one of our criteria. Now it goes to number three criteria, which is this has to be a master switch. This has to be dominant, uh, the uh, inhibitors, right? So we then move to our in vitro, in vivo, immunological assays to identify this molecule is a dominant or not, okay? In variety of different system, this system including mouse models and also lots of human studies, okay, we, we actually also conduct. 
So the one, uh, today I'm going to show you one, quickly show you one of the molecules uh, we identified, and this is uh, uh, now it's already moved to clinic. It's called Secret 15. Um, as I mentioned, this molecule is not come out by, say, gene family, it's a secret family we're particularly interested. It's not. This is come out from screen, screening. Come out screening, it can be any genes. Okay? It can be any gene family, it can be, can be something unknown. So this is a member of salic acid binding uh, the lectin okay, family molecule. So this large piece is Ig, IgV, IgC domain. Okay? And then there's a but in the in, in the end of the N terminal there's silic acid binding uh, motifs, which means they could interact with silic acid. Uh, the um, so now uh, this is a type one protein, okay, and the intracellular domain there's I team domain, okay. So potentially this molecule could deliver signal to the cell, okay, to the to the um, to be a receptor actually. Uh, normally this molecule express in low level in macrophage. And myeloid cells, some of myeloid cells, neutrophil dendritic cells, okay. And B cell is B cell osteoclast also expressed, but it's very low level. Okay. In general, it's very low level. Even macrophage myeloid cells, it's about 15, 20 percent of cells normally express this molecule in low level. Okay. So it's uh, it is very low. But in the cancer, it's much higher expression. So this match one of our criteria. So it's, it's, this is the RNA data showing normal tissue. It's, it's a very minimal level. In the on the top is the human uh, data. And there's a, a positive control is macrophage. Okay. And in the mouse, uh, you can see there's a, there's a very low level also in most of the tissues. Okay. Now, there's in human cancer, there's clearly upregulation. You can see this is a variety of different type of cancers uh, based on RNA data. Okay, this is, uh, um, you can see bladder cancer, colon, rectals, kidney, lung, uh, they all have a fraction of the patient have clearly upregulated up uh, messenger RNA or CD15. And this is David Rain in the pathology departments uh, show, uh, the, uh, did, a, did a work. And uh, you can see this is a one example of many uh, studies he had done. Is the lung, small cell lung cancers. In the 159 cases, you can see there's 49 of them positive. You know, based on this uh, quantity of immunofluorescence. Uh, the, interestingly, is the, the expression um, in the human cancer patient appears to be in either in the, um, the uh, stroma. You can see this is a stroma, which is red, show as red, which is most likely is myeloid cells. And then also in the tumor mask, which means this molecule can directly upregulate on the cancer cell surface. Okay. So why? Then we know most of uh, uh, these uh, um, lung, small cell lung cancer uh, cells are epithelial cells, right? So why or how this endothelial, uh, uh, this epithelial cell can express this molecule, okay, which is which is quite surprising. And but anyway, this is the this is the data. This is the this is the fact. And the uh, another uh, interesting thing is this secret 15 appears to be reverse inversely correlated with PDL1 expression. So that makes sense because we are actually purposely looking at type 3 molecules. The molecule in the type 3 cancer, right, which supposedly PDL1 is very low anyway, right? So which is actually match what, what we, what we, uh, what our hypothesis is. So you can see this expression on the, on the uh, sequence 15 on the, on the, on the, uh, the y axis and the PDL1 on the, on the x axis. You can see this correlation is very, very weak. Okay? We have, probably three, four cases uh, correlated uh, in a couple hundred uh, samples. So the, uh, ob obviously we show series of uh, data showing secret 15 can inhibit T cell activation. This is one of the data showing that uh, you can use secret 15 purified fusion protein, either human or mouse, can inhibit uh, T cell proliferation. And the, also the, uh, we have an antibody, which is uh, s s specific for secret 15, can inhibit tumor growth. This is the MC38 tumors grow in the, in the body and in, in the mouse, and then uh, you give antibody and you can inhibit. So we did a site of profiling, which is, this is still preliminary, and uh, data is quite interesting. Is the, uh, when we implant the MC38 into the mice, which is white type or a secret 15 knockout, okay? So white type versus knockout, knockout is shown as red, and you can see there's a, this, we did this experiment particularly interested in uh, what kind of change on myeloid cells, right? Because myeloid cell, is, as I mentioned, myeloid cell is one of the uh, major uh, secret 15 positive cells. 
So on the left, you can see CDA in, in this knockout maze, obviously tumor grow much slower. Then you can see the bed, T reg is not changing much, T reg, CD4, but CDA is clearly much higher in the knockout maze. Okay. NK cells also increase, okay, it appears to be. But myeloid cells, this is a very complicated. From number seven channel, channel number seven to 19, okay, you can see this is 13 different subsets of myeloid cells based on the marker shown on the right, okay. These are all myeloid cells, but there's different subset of myeloid cells. And, and there's clearly, there's some, of my, some subset of myeloid cells are unchanged, and some of them change dramatically. Okay, so this is we are still conducting further analysis to see. As I mentioned in the, in the, in the early, CQ15 only expressed in subset of myeloid cells. Okay, this is the idea. It's not in all the myeloid cells, so, so that which, which is reasonable when we see this data. So the issue is then is what, which subset, okay? Is there any unique feature? Can we use that to predict the outcome? So all these things is ongoing right now. So the two, uh, again, this is a couple, the, the concepts, three different concepts, okay, we, we will talk about and use that. We can develop uh, the, uh, based on this, you know, guide by these principles, then we can actually um, come up the molecule like this. So this, uh, as I mentioned, this, again, this is not the checkpoint blockade. Checkpoint blockade means any inhibitors can be put on. Uh, I actually strongly against the ideas, okay? I, I think that's, that's not the really uh, what we're looking for, okay? Because we have uh, lots of uh, experience early time from the so-called enhancement approaches. You can see this, when you push the immune system to a certain level, then the price to pay actually is toxicities, okay? So by this way, by this uh, more focused normalization approach, you can actually avoid lots of toxicities, okay? You, you basically try to, you know, to, you know, to get fire on the tumor microenvironment rather than the whole body, okay? This is a general ideas. So the, um, now this anti cq 15 antibody is in clinical trial, okay? Phase one started last year, October, and the uh, phase one, two together, and the, in collaboration with Nest Cure companies. And the, the eligible, eligible patients are two type of patients, okay? One is patient have, this all is patient have advanced solid tumors who either uh, have a PD-L1 low, okay, typically pd one low patients who uh, sometimes after screening, they were not eligible for PD-1 treatment, okay? So those are the, those are eligible for our treatment, for our, our drug. Number two is the patient is give the anti-PD-1 or pd one therapy and then they fail the therapy, okay? So they, you can see this type of uh, the, uh, the trial is not really competing with current, uh, the ongoing the, the therapy or trials. And biomarker, this, this is a biomarker study we uh, take very seriously. We are going to, uh, to do retrospective, and, and we are doing actually retrospective and perspective. Uh, the biomarker study, try to identify the particular subset of patient. As I mentioned, the type three patient is, from that we can start with, okay? And the fire hospital uh, in the country, um, the uh, Yale is the Lee, is the Lee site. Lee means the sample all goes to us for analysis, okay? So phase one result will be released. This is phase one is basically is done, okay? Uh, the, uh, because uh, from October, right? So uh, the, because of this conflict interest uh, issues, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm associated with this next school. I'm a scientific founder of this school. So the, I will not be able to, to talk too much, but something I can tell you is, number one, in the phase one result, it, the drug is very safe, okay? We haven't seen much severe, too much severe toxicities until, unless the drug use huge number, okay? So the, this is what, the, what, what we see. So it's very safe. Number two, we already see some responder, okay? So which is as a single agent, okay? So I think this is, we're very happy with that. And the, uh, well, hopefully, I think phase one result will be released next month. So, so the again, um, this is a, a kind of summary what what we are target target for. As I mentioned to you, number type two patient, which is now lots of them, more than fifty percent of them, benefit from PT one, PT one therapies, right? But majority of other is not. So then, CQ fifteen, which is target very different popular, subset of patient, okay, who is PT one low or, or not, or, or negative. 
and the, this type of patient have a T cell infiltration, type of three, C15 might benefit from that. We, we, we think that the C15 might also actually benefit some of the patient in the, in the PD1, PD1 resistant patient, okay, and which could, could, be, uh, uh, could be interesting. This is our, our, our plan next. So then you can see here, obviously, type one and type four, which is more than 50% of patients, right? What are we going to do about it? I can tell you we actively study that. The idea is, in our lab, is in this type of patient, it's not just simply absence of the, the T cell infiltration. Is T cell actually get a signal not, not to come, not to migrate, okay? That it is the reason is not simply because of uh, the absence of of the uh, T cells. It's because of active mechanism operating in the tumor site, and then cause T cell not to come. So this is from very basic science angle to to uh, approach this question. So this is very different from what right now is mainstream idea, which is you just can simply inject some of the things which can stimulate immune response directly into tumor, okay? For example, toll receptors or, or stink or whatever into tumor directly, okay? Um, which is most of them actually right now already fail in clinical trials. And we think is that if there is um, clearly active process or inhibitory mechanism in, the, in, the, in this type of tumor, then the, if you are not figured out that first, then it will not work. Obviously, you try to force the immune system, it's not going to work. So this is what we're working on. So recap what, what I'm talking about, cancer immune therapy, I think, is the, basically is the end of the beginning, okay? End of the beginning means we, we get some promising results, PD-1, pd one We learn something, and we learn something very different from the traditional cancer immune therapy, which is mostly based on idea or enhancement, right? So now I think we have, we have different ideas. Is the obviously there's a there's a uh, con, con, I'm I'm not saying enhancement cancer immune therapy should be stopped. Okay, immune, enhancement immune therapy actually give lots of values. We know how immune immune system worked, how how you can uh, operate them. The issue is more like you have to watch the toxicities. Okay, for normalization right now, is the uh, many targets still need to be discovered. Okay, this is what I think is uh, it's, it's uh, for the next many years. Uh, the uh, the effort is need to be put in there, okay? So the, obviously, lots of work, as I mentioned, a few people in the lab, and the, the, uh, also the, there's a large team of the, uh, the uh, translational and the clinical team. Uh, as you see, Lloyd Herbst sit there, <laughs> David Rim, uh, and, and, and Kurt Schauper is a pathologist, and the Pe Pedro Russo and uh, Mario Snow, who is a clinical team, actually involved in the clinical trials, okay? Thank you.